What's going on and welcome to the Solo Shot. My name is Tom Vecchio. We have an 11-game MLB slate tonight. Lock is set for 7.05. As always, this is one of the many shows on the FanDuel Podcast Network. You can find that anywhere, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's Spotify, you name it. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. Leave a review. That'd be greatly appreciated. The video version can be found on the FanDuel YouTube page. It can be found on FanDuel TV+. Plus. It can be found on FanDuel.com slash watch. Before we hop into things, snap into NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, or Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step 253342 in Arizona. Call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT if you're in Indiana. Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit KS Gambling Help in Kansas. In Louisiana, call 1-877-770-STOP. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. In Wyoming, call 1-800-522-4700. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-888-1877-8. Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. All right, let's get into tonight's 11-game MLB slate to close out the week. A lock set for 705. A few weather notes to start things off for today. Nothing too major. It's really more of wind. Uh, Atlanta visiting the Nationals. There could be a little bit of rain throughout the game. Uh, a little bit of wind blowing in from center, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Same thing for the Yankees at home. No rain for the Yankees, that is. And no rain for Philly, no rain for Cleveland. It's just a little bit of wind blowing in in all these places. So I, uh, a slight bump to the pitchers uh, between Arizona and New York Yankees, between the New York Mets and the Phillies, between Baltimore and, and Cleveland. And then we have L.A. Angels visiting Minnesota. Same thing as Atlanta and Washington. Could be a little bit of rain, probably not at the start of the game, and then a little bit of wind blowing in from center. So nothing overly concerning really at all tonight. Let's get into the pitching starting off of the top where Framber Valdez is 11.3, Pablo Lopez is 11,000, Charlie Morton is 10.3, Shane Bieber coming off the IL is 9.5, Chris Sale is 9.2, Cole Raggins is 9,000 rounds at the options that are 9K and above. Obviously, there are a number of options that are in the 8,000 range. You could certainly be looking there, but we want upside. We want strikeouts. That's what we're going for. That's what we got a whole lot of last night, I should say, between uh, Scooball and Cole. Those pitchers certainly racked up plenty of strikeouts. And all the way up the top with Framber Valdez for the Houston Astros, 11.3 at home, going up against the Kansas City Royals. He's a good option tonight. He's certainly not my favorite option tonight. Coming in with a 24.1% strikeout rate, 6.5% walk rate, 0.86 home runs per nine allowed. He has a 3.69 Sierra. That is absolutely awesome. If you've been playing MLB DFS for a few years, you know a few things about Framber Valdez. He's a massive, massive ground ball, medium contact pitcher. He simply does not allow fly balls at a high rate in any capacity. He has a 25% fly ball rate this year. It's the highest of his career. 25% is the highest of his career. Back over the past few years, it was 16, 14, 19%. He keeps the ball low with ground balls at a 54% rate this year and a 51 medium contact rate. He's a good option. He does not carry the same strikeout upside that we see from other pitchers. He could very easily go six, seven innings, uh, one earned run, five strikeouts. The matchup going up against the Royals is certainly an easier one, but again, we want to be focusing on what has the most upside. Kansas City, they come with a 23.8% strikeout rate with their current active roster versus lefties, which is the 11th worst in the league. So it's no doubt a good matchup for Valdez. 
but do we like it as number one? I don't think so. I think that we want to be looking to Pablo Lopez as the top pitcher on tonight's slate. 29.2% strikeout rate is absolutely no joke. He's been pushing his strikeout rate higher and higher this season. 6.1% walk rate. He does allow 1.13 home runs per nine. He still has a 3.40 Sierra right uh, You know, in comparison to Valdez. He can go head-to-head with that, but he has a significantly better strikeout rate. He has a 53% medium contact rate, and he's still a majority ground ball pitcher at 44.7%. Now his fly ball rate is at 36.8%. So that's obviously where some of the home runs come. But man, this matchup for Pablo Lopez is something that we absolutely love. Going up against the Angels, right now the Angels, their current active roster versus righties, they come with a 25.7% strikeout rate, which is the second worst in the league. They also come in with an 85 WRC plus in this split versus righties, which is 29th in the league. And they have a 169 team ISO for the Angels right now, which we see sitting, uh, the Angels sitting right now with a 169 ISO is 18th in the league. So this is no doubt a great match for Pablo Lopez in comparison to Valdez going up against the Royals, but the strikeout upside lies with Pablo Lopez. That's where I want to be going as the top option on tonight's pitching slate, 11,000. Now, certainly very expensive. Uh, If you want to drop down to Charlie Morton, I think that's fine. 10.3 going up against Washington. Uh, Morton coming off a, a few tougher starts, but this matchup against Washington is not something that we're particularly worried about. Again, there could be a little bit of rain in this game after the game starts, so kind of keep that in mind. I certainly prefer Lopez uh, at 11,000 ahead of really anyone else on the slate. Shane Bieber is 9.5. I have zero interest in Shane Bieber. He's coming off the 60-day IL. Apparently, he's going to be limited to about 80 pitches. That was one report I read. He's 9.5. He has a really, really tough time reaching fantasy value at 9.5 if he's going to be on some type of limited pitch count. Dean Creamer on the other side for Baltimore, I think is at least interesting because of his salary at 8.8. But Chris Sale at 9.2, I think is really interesting tonight. And the matchup is good going up against the White Sox, which we know can present some nice strikeout upside. The only potential issue that I have with Chris Sale is the potential pitch count. And recently, it's been a bit lower, and we have to kind of factor all this in. His potential pitch count, his matchup, his salary, his fantasy upside, all this. So in his most recent outing, 81 pitches, not great. Outing before that, 80 pitches, not great. But then he was up at 100 pitches against Kansas City, and then he was at 92 pitches against Houston. So I'm hoping that they're not like scaling him back as the season is coming to a close because this really is a good match. I mean, he's coming off a a big, big performance against the Blue Jays. Now, do I expect that type of 10 strikeout performance in six innings tonight? No, but at at 9,200, I think he certainly has the potential to reach value considering he's still striking out hitters at a super high clip. I know he went through a few years where he struggled just simply not playing a whole lot, but he has a 29.8% strikeout rate this season, which is absolutely no joke. And it's coming from a 92 inning sample size. This is the most innings he's pitched since 2019. He did not pitch at all in 2020. He pitched 42.2 innings in 2021, and he pitched only 5.2 innings last year. So this is the most innings he's pitched in three years, four years, and he's up at a 29% strikeout rate, 29.8, almost 30%. So Chris Sale is certainly on my radar tonight, given what we know he can do. He has a 3.48 Sierra. He's still struggling a little bit with fly balls up at 42.4%, but I'm not overly worried about this matchup going up against the Chicago White Sox, a team that really doesn't have any type of power in their lineup. The White Sox, their current active roster versus lefties, they come in with a 24% strikeout rate, which is the 10th worst in the league. They come in with a 91 WRC plus for the Chicago White Sox, which is 27th in the league. And then they have... Literally no power in their lineup with a 135 team ISO, which is 28th in the league. So Chris Sale at 9,200 tonight is really, really interesting. And I think he could go a bit overlooked. You know, everyone's going to be trying to get up to Lopez. Everyone's going to be trying to get up to Valdez, these pitchers that are, uh, you know, bringing a higher level of consistency. They're maybe worried about Chris Sale's pitch count. But if he can get those strikeouts going as he did in the most recent outing, this is a player that can really pile up some good point-per-dollar value. 
All right, so that does it for pitching. Let's get into the hitting stacks on tonight's slate. We have the Braves on tonight's slate. They are in a great matchup going up against Patrick Corbin. As I mentioned, this is a game that could feature a little bit of rain, uh, a little bit of wind blowing in. You know, take it for what it, it is. If conditions were perfect, I'd be all in on the Braves tonight. We saw what they did last night. That's the type of upset that they have every single night. I'm still going to have interest in the Braves. Even though there's a little bit of rain or, or wind issues, it's Patrick Corbin. We want to be attacking Patrick Corbin. Uh, so that is very, very clear. The Dodgers also on tonight's slate. We know what their potential is last night. They scored seven runs last night. Always good offense. We want to be stacking. But where else can we be looking outside of those two very obvious teams? We also don't have course field on tonight's slate. Let's go to the Arizona Diamondbacks. They're on the road visiting the New York Yankees. The Yankees will have Luke Weaver on the mound. Luke Weaver has made a single start with the Yankees. He is on his third team this season. Simply put, Luke Weaver is not a good pitcher. I, I mean, this is, I mean, the fact that he's on a third team this year should be evidence enough that he's not a good pitcher. Teams don't let good pitchers go. Weaver is allowing 2.13 home runs per nine. He has a 19.1% striker rate, a 7.4% walk rate, a 3.33 Babbitt batting average balls in play, and he comes with a 4.73. Sierra too many fly balls too much hard contact at 38.9% fly ball rate 37.8% hard contact rate Luke Weaver is a pitcher you should be excited to see each and every time he's on the mound is a pitcher that presents plenty of fantasy upside for the opposing teams you look at his most recent start and at least from his game log it looks somewhat decent but he was going up against Pittsburgh he only pitched four innings. I don't think we need to be too worried about Luke Weaver. It's more about the potential upside for the opposing team. And Arizona is a team that has a lot of that. And frankly, when it comes to the top of their lineup, we have pretty clear hitters, hitters that we want to be going to. I would say one, two, three, four, five, right down the line. Corbin Carroll, 4K. Cattell Marte, 3,700. Tommy Pham, 3,200. Christian Walker, 3,200. And Lourdes Gurriel at 3,100. Any of these five hitters you could be getting into your lineups you should certainly be looking to do so. I have a preference for the first four ahead of Lourdes Gurriel, but there's no doubt that Gurriel with a 233 ISO in the split versus righties is absolutely fantastic. And realistically, all five of them are great because all five of them have ISOs over 200 versus right-handed pitching. Corbin Carroll, 270. Cattell Marte, 223. Christian Walker, 207. Tommy Pham, 230. And then Lourdes Goriel at 233. They are all great options for power. There's a little bit of wind blowing in at Yankee Stadium. It's not overly concerning. It's still Luke Weaver. He's still giving up over two home runs per nine uh, to hitters this two, yeah, two home runs per nine to hitters this year. All five of these hitters have ISOs over 200. Stack any of them that you can. I would prefer getting Corbin Carroll, obviously, is number one. Get that stolen base upside. He has a tremendous fantasy ceiling. Uh, yeah, I would go Corbin Carroll. Christian Walker, Catal Marte, Tommy Pham, Lourdes Goriel in that order of who I'd be targeting from Arizona. I mean, they come in with, what is it? Uh, their implied run total is up in the four range. Uh, I don't have it right here. It's going to be up in the four range for Arizona. Um, just too good of a matchup going up against Luke Weaver. Next, let's turn to Minnesota. They are going up against Davis Daniel for the Los Angeles Angels. He has three innings pitched at the major league level this season. This is his first year in the major leagues. Earlier this year, he was pitching in single A. He has a 20.1 inning sample size in single A this year. He has a 4.0 inning sample size in triple A this year. Now, last year, he was in triple A the majority of the time and had over 100 innings pitched at triple A last season, but this year he pitched 20 innings at single A, four innings at triple A, and now three innings at the major league level. I think looking back to some of what he did in the largest sample size from last year in triple A would be the best indication. And it's really not amazing when he's allowing 1.23 home runs per nine with a 19% strikeout rate. So he's below the, the MLB average in terms of strikeout rate, and he's allowing too many home runs, too many fly balls. So let's turn to Minnesota, a team that actually has some good power in this split. Uh, and I'm always going to be a fan of a team like Minnesota 
because of their salaries. Now, Royce, uh, Royce Lewis, who's been by far their best player, especially in this recent stretch, he's 4,200, and he's listed as day-to-day. If he does not play, I think it's stacking Minnesota is that much easier just because they're so, so affordable. Jorge Polanco at 3,200 would, would be the next most expensive hitter after Royce Lewis. So Lewis is 42. Jorge Polanco is 3,200. That means every other player we want to be going to is sub 3K. Ryan Jeffers, Max Kepler, all in play. Matt Wallner, all sub $3,000. Trevor Larnack, Michael Taylor, yes, he doesn't bring a whole lot of power, but he could certainly be used in a stack. Kyle Farmer, 2,700. All of these players really, really helpful when it comes to lineup construction. And listen, Matt Wallner, a 258 ISO in this split versus righties. Would I love Royce Lewis to be healthy and ready to go? Of course so. But if he's not in there, I think it actually makes stacking Minnesota that much easier. So I'm not worried about a pitcher that the Angels, who have a bad bullpen or have just been bad all season, I'm not really worried about any pitcher that they're going to be calling up. I'm going to be looking to stack against the Angels time and time again. And we're stacking with a team that is very fantasy friendly when it comes to their salaries. When we potentially want to pay up for Pablo Lopez on Minnesota, we want to you know pay up for Framber Valdez. We want to pay up for the Brave stack. We want to pay up for the Dodger stack, who are all very expensive. We can be getting three, four different hitters into lineups that are sub three thousand, and that makes a ton of sense when it comes to lineup construction tonight. I think we also want to touch on the Red Sox real quick. They're at home. They're going, they're going up against Tuki Tucson for the Chicago uh, the Chicago White Sox. The Red Sox. Our team, I think we should also be looking to stack. Uh, Toussaint for the White Sox has been on and off some teams over the past few years. Hasn't pitched a whole lot in any single season. 76.2 innings pitched this year is his largest sample size since he has been in the majors in 2018. So this is probably the best indication of what type of pitcher he truly is. And it's honestly just a reflection of what we've seen from him in years past, which is a 15.2% walk rate this season, which is very, very high, but it's actually exactly what we've seen from him in years past, where last year it was at 17.6% and 10.2% and 13.3% and 13.1% and 17.1%. He does not have a whole lot of control on the mound. Also combined with the fact that he allows too many fly balls and he's allowing 1.17 home runs per nine this season. Way, way, way too many runners on base for free is absolutely terrible. He comes on the 5.1 to Sierra. And, he, and I mean, that's just devastating, right? You allow runners on for free and then you're allowing home runs. The damage piles up super quickly. Basically the ideal profile of a pitcher that I like to attack. We know that that, pre- that presents so much fantasy upside for opposing teams. Now, Rafi Devers, of course, at 4,100 would be the ideal option to get into the lineup for Boston. And we also have to remember that Tristan Casas has been shut down for the Red Sox for the rest of the season. So it's kind of the same situation for the Red Sox as it is for Minnesota, where Devers is great. He's awesome. 4,100 would love to have him in every single lineup, but if you can't afford him as the same with Royce Lewis, the Red Sox offer a bit of salary relief where Justin Turner, 3.3, Adam Duvall, 3,000, Alex Verdugo, 2,900, and, you know, Yoshida at 2,900. All these players are very, very affordable given their matchup. So again, I would love to have Royce Lewis and, and Rafi Devers in every single lineup, but that may not be the case given what we are under this salary cap restriction, when, especially when we're paying up for pitching. So I'm on board with Boston tonight, just given their matchup against Tuki Toussaint for the White Sox, and that presents some nice home run upside for them. Also want to quickly mention the Padres tonight going up against Dakota Hudson, uh, also a pitcher from the Cardinals, another pitcher you don't need to be too worried about overall. He is a very, very low strikeout pitcher at 13% this year. He was at 13.1% last season in a bigger sample size last season. So I think we are a good, we're seeing a good indication of what he truly is, which is not a high strikeout pitcher in any capacity. Uh, I'll take the hitters from the Padres in this matchup time and time again. Just looking to differentiate the exposure just a little bit. I think we're going to be seeing some relative chalk when some of these teams, we know LA, we know Atlanta, they're always going to be great stacking options, but Arizona's going to be a very, very clear option for a lot of people tonight. Wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of people going back to Philly tonight, uh, just given their matchup against the Mets. I think that is certainly viable, but I want to kind of go off the board a little bit and take uh, take the Padres 
in a good matchup going up against Dakota Hudson. So let's get to the dinger calls to close things out. I uh, really want to go with Ronald Acuna as just the easy answer tonight going up against Patrick Corbin. But again, the conditions aren't ideal there. There's rain. There's wind blowing in. So let's go to Mookie Betts for the Dodgers going up against Sean Manaya. As straight uh, as straightforward of a matchup as you possibly imagine. And Mookie Betts has plenty of historic success against Sean Manaya. I think this is a very, very clear option. And then let's go to Corbin Carroll for the Arizona Diamondbacks. He has been absolutely electric this season. Uh, lefty at Yankee Stadium is always great. ISO over 200 going up against Luke Weaver. Checking every single box we could possibly want. So Mookie Betts, Corbin Carroll for the two home run calls to close things out. All right, so that does it for today's podcast. It's always going to be found on Apple Podcasts can be found on Spotify. Make sure you are to subscribe to the number the FanDuel Podcast Network. You want everything there. We have football in there with Jim Sonis and Brandon Gadula. UFC is back, so Austin Swain is going full-time on that for UFC. And, of course, we'll be closing out the MLB season next week with this. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Until next time, good luck in your contests.